Hey everybody, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. In today's video we're going to talk about second order systems, uh, particularly how do we look at a second order system to decide whether it's underdamped or overdamped, and then also how do we draw the Bode plot approximations to the second order systems, particularly for the underdamped case we'll see. takes uh, We need to, to think a little more carefully than we did for the first order systems we saw earlier this week. Okay, so that's the overview. Uh, let's switch over to the whiteboard and get get down to business. So we'll find second order systems are easiest to analyze when we put them in the standard form shown here, where we have h of j omega is omega sub n squared over j omega squared, quantity squared, plus 2 times zeta omega n times j omega plus omega n squared. And it's an important thing to be clear here, omega n squared is a, or omega n is a constant in this form. Well, this constant omega n is sub n is the undamped or natural frequency. That the historic use of natural is why we put the omega n on it, and the uh, second parameter zeta, which is this sort of uh, funny squiggle like this, is the damping ratio. And these two parameters contain a lot of information about how the system will behave. Omega n tells me roughly what the frequency of the oscillation is. It may be, but it may be modified a little bit. By, by zeta here, and zeta tells me something very important about how the system behaves depending on its value. The zeta is between 0 and 1, the system is underdamped, and that means practically that in the time domain we'll see an impulse response that oscillates. So if I do a sort of quick sketch here, it would start at 0 and then oscillate, and the, this, uh, this spacing will be like pi over omega n roughly where again, the, the actual value of zeta will change it a little bit. But this, it, it, this is sort of a, a decaying ringing sound, like a bell, if it's, if it's a sound. But in general, these systems oscillate. If zeta is bigger than 1, the system is overdamped. And overdamped systems can be factored into a cascade of two first-order systems like we talked about last time. So we won't be saying a lot about those today, other than we'll just be checking to make sure, we'll, we'll focus on the underdamped systems and checking to make sure zeta is in this range between 0 and 1. Uh, and if, I guess for completeness, if zeta equals 1, the system is what we call critically damped. But we're not, which is the case where the, where the the uh, the two factors are exactly the same. This is, is sort of a, a special second order system, uh, where we could factor it as as uh, a perfect square in the denominator. So in this case, you could again think of it as cascade of first order systems, but two identical first order systems. In practice, it doesn't happen a real lot in my experience, so we're we're going to not talk about that today. We're going to keep most of our focus on the underdamped case and understanding its behavior because it's the sort of new element to what's going on today. For the overdamped, we can use the techniques we saw last time. Okay, so uh, let's uh, th that's the big picture idea. Let's let's now take a little bit move on to the next thing and think about how this behaves asymptotically. So for our asymptotic analysis, we always consider for frequency response two cases, what happens when omega goes to zero and what happens when it goes to infinity. And then based on that, we're going to get to our Bode plot straight line approximations for the magnitude of the frequency response. So first is omega goes to zero. Well, in that case, the denominator terms that have omega all vanish and I'm left with omega n squared over omega n squared which is equal to 1. And so if I want to convert that into decibels, I take 20 log of 1, I get 0 dB. So for low frequencies, we have a con constant gain with 0 dB, which seems familiar. Uh, let's think about what happens as omega goes to infinity. Well, in that case, the, nu the numerator still just has this constant omega n squared in it, but the denominator term is dominated by the j omega squared. Right, that, that as, we, as omega goes to infinity, the largest power of omega dominates. So we can ignore the omega term and the constant term, and we get something that's omega n squared over j omega squared. Or uh, in the, uh, if we square that out, the j squared becomes a minus 1. So we get omega n squared over minus omega squared. And I guess to be technical, this is what it's approaching, not what it's equal to. And so if I look at the magnitude of the h here, I get, well, I just cancel the, the, the negative sign in the denominator. And now if I take 20 log of this on both sides, I get 20 log of magnitude of h of j omega. 
is it going to be approaching, well, a log of a ratio is the ratio of the log. So I'll have the 20 log omega n squared minus 20 log of omega squared. But I can simplify this further because I know the log of something squared is 2 times the log. So let me move up and make some space for that. Right, so I've replaced both the square of both terms by 2 times the log, since the log of squared has that property, and so now I can just multiply these through. And so as I go to high frequencies, what I see is I have something where this term is just a constant, depending on the value of omega n, and then uh, I have something that's decaying like 40 times the log omega, so that would give me a slope of minus 40 dB per decade. So thinking about what we have here, now's a good chance for you to pause and ponder for a moment. What kind of filter does this th seem like? Right, this kind of filter is, is also a low-pass filter. It's just as a second-order filter, the high frequencies decay faster. So it attenuates faster than our first-order filter. So let's move to a clean page and make a picture of this. So to start out, let me draw my axes. So just like we had with first order systems, I'm still going to have magnitude of h and dB, that's 20 times the log of, of h, versus log of, of omega. And we had already, we saw that for low frequencies, we have a, a uh, constant uh, 0 dB line. And then at higher frequencies, we have, which, which I've shown here in green, and then for higher frequencies, we have uh, something that's attenuating at 40 dB per decade, so pretty steeply. And so let me draw that in. And so this is the advantage of having a higher order filter is that these, we get to the stop band faster, right? It decays away faster that way. And now our remaining question is knowing that we started at 0 dB for the, uh, the, the green part we saw. The remaining question is what's the point of intercept? Or where do these two, where do I switch from one approximation to the other? What's this omega here? Well, that's the point at which the line we had here will, will intercept 0 dB. Remember we had... the line was 40 times the uh, log of omega n minus 40 log of omega. And so the intercept happens where that line is equal to 0 dB. So I set that equal to 0. I can now go ahead and solve for each side, and I'll see that that happens at about omega equals omega n. So this intercept point here will be on the log scale will be at the point omega n. And then things will go up. You know, if this is uh, 10 omega n here, this, is the, this will be at 40 dB down in one decade. So on the next next decade over would be 80 dB down. So if this is 100 times omega n at that frequency, at that by the point it gets down here, it would be minus 80 dB. So, so de descending very quickly there. So this is our approximation of the two asymptotes. The one other uh, tricky thing we need to bring in is, is uh, the actual behavior rate at that around omega n depends on whether the system is overdamped or underdamped. And so let me uh, let me clean this up a little bit and then we'll we'll add those in. We'd see in terms of the graphical behavior two roughly two kinds of behavior. There's a smooth transition between them, but we see two different kinds of behaviors when even even for underdamped systems depending on whether it's uh, barely underdamped or not. So the usual dividing line people cite is 1 over root 2. So we often say if the uh, damping ratio is less than one over root two, which is about 0.7. Then we get a then we have a resonant pe peak here. And the height of that peak will be uh, roughly one. Uh, was it one over two zeta? times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. So as zeta gets very, very small, it's roughly 1 over 2 zeta. And so I'm going to draw that one here in blue. So again, for the, the if zeta is less than about 0.7, the curve, we connect the two asymptotes with something that has a resonant peak where the height is about 20 times log of 1 over 2 zeta. And that just to sort of roughly, we say that, that we connected it from about one decade below at omega n over 10 to one decade above at 10 omega n because anything beyond that, the resonance doesn't matter that much and we're back to our asymptotic slopes. 
So again, for the, the very underdamped case, the curve is going to look roughly like this. And the more underdamped it is, the smaller zeta will be. So the bigger this thing will be, that the taller and sharper this peak will be to get here. At the other extreme, is if, if I'm underdamped but just barely, so sort of between root 1 over root 2 and 1, it just kind of looks a little bit more like the first order system. So when we do that, it will just sort of smoothly blend from one to the other. And I'm going to do that in yellow now for this picture. So I'll get something that looks like this. And even though it's technically under damp, there is very little uh, ringing. And we'll see that it, it, it's basically very close to the, the first order uh, or, or series of two first order things. But it still has this very good slope of minus 40 dB per decade that's the decaying quickly. And there are times and reasons that we would want each of these. There are times where we want a system to resonate and respond at a certain frequency. There are other times where we want something that is just a basic low pass filter without the resonance, but with a faster attenuation like is shown here. So uh, those are the, the general values. I guess it's worth going on to the next page just to say, well, you know, where are the exact values coming from for this? So let me, let me write those down just so you've seen them. So more precisely, for this very underdamped region where zeta is less than 1 over root 2, the, peak, the actual exact frequency, the peak frequency, will be uh, slightly less than omega n by an amount that depends on zeta, but not by that much in this range, right? The, the, the lowest this would go would be zeta n over a half, if zeta, if zeta is less than 1 over root 2, because right at 1 over root 2, this would become a half. So actually, this would be the square root of a half still, so 0 0.7 uh, times omega n. And as, as zeta gets closer and closer to 0, we get closer to that natural undamped frequency. And the peak there for this standard form is going to be 1 over 2 zeta times 1 minus zeta squared. OK, so that's. Uh, for the more, if we need to be more precise about what's going on, but in terms of the rough approximation, the peak is going to be in the neighborhood of the undamped frequency, and and so the big picture idea is to go back to the uh, the plot on the previous page. Right, is that we're going to start with something like we had last time with two straight lines, but the high frequency asymptote has a steeper slope. It's minus 40 dB rather than minus 20 because this is a second order system. And then the other thing we're going to then add in a little modification of those two straight lines to roughly approximate uh, what's going on to indicate how resonant the system is, how much underdamping or overdamping it has uh, in, in each case. All right, so I'm going to stop here for this video. In the next video, I'll go on and show an example of a second order system where we analyze it, first figuring out what the damping is, and then make a, a more detailed sketch for a specific value rather than this sort of general template sketch. Okay, so that's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.